Tyler here with projectsinmetal.com and today we have a special treat. I'm over here in Port Angeles with Jim Schroeder and he's going to give us a tour of his shop and uh, show us some of the modifications he's done with his G0602, the 10 by 22 lathe that Grizzly produces. So Jim, why don't you go ahead and give us a tour of your lathe. Uh, one of my recent changes was to add a digital display for the tailstock which is made out of a four inch caliper. I took a, uh, a cutting wheel and removed the jaws for the caliper so that all I was left with was the reading head and the scale and uh, attached that with a simple aluminum clamp. Uh, another change that we've made is we've added DROs both for the Y and for the X axis, a 24 inch on the uh, X axis and a smaller 8 inch on the Y axis and it's connected to a Schumatech 550 DRO uh, display assembly. Uh, I've also added a shelf so that I have some place to put all the odds and ends that you inevitably collect and another shelf above that to uh, hold all the various tool holders that uh, that I've accumulated over the years. Uh, of course, I got a quick uh, quick connect tool post, but just about everybody has those nowadays. This is a phase two, and uh, I added a shield over the top of the chuck that also is an electrical disconnect. So if you're running the lathe and you lift this, it turns off the power. To restart the power, just press the green button. This is, this is the method that I use to stop the lathe uh, all the time rather than using the other switches. Uh, Let's go down, well we made another small change here and that was simply a, a uh, extension with a little lever on it for the carriage lock rather than having to use a hex wrench. And then you have a cam lock on your tailstock too. Yes, cam lock on the tailstock makes it easy to lock it in position, no wrenches. Did you have to put a spring underneath yours? I noticed on mine. No, just gravity. Really? Because on mine it... it uh it catches. So yeah. I'm going to have to put some sort of spring on it when I do a cam lock on my lathe. Yeah, no, it seems to work just like that. The first change that I made down at this end was to put a DC motor on there so that I would have variable speed. So if you want to thread, you can do it at a very slow speed and have much better control. Uh, Or you can run it up to about 2,000 RPM. Uh, another change that I made was I added an index wheel which is used to make calibrated dials and knobs of one type or another. Uh, there are two rows of holes here. The outer one is one degree in increments and the other one is base 10. So if you want to do uh, something in decimal as opposed to 360 degrees you can you can do that. Uh, I also added a carrier for an idler gear that allows you to reverse the direction of the feed screw, the lead screw, so that you can do left-handed threading. Do you want to try and show them how that works? Sure. So you put the idler gear in position against the driven gear. Like 
so. Now everything runs the other way. So now if, because I know a lot of people are going to be wondering whether they should go with a VFD motor or a DC motor if they're going to be, you know, changing their motor out at all. Since you've done the DC conversion, if you had it to do over again, would you do that again or would you go ahead and get a variable motor? No, i get the variable frequency drive. Uh, I have that on the mill and uh, my first effort was the DC motor and this is a two horsepower motor. Uh, but after a couple of years of experience with this and comparing it against the variable frequency drive, I think the variable frequency drive is the way to go because you get better torque at the low end, which you don't get with permanent magnet motors. This is out of a treadmill, which is a pretty common motor to use. The uh, KB controllers that I use, which are a standard industrial uh, type DC controller, give some feedback but not quite enough to compensate for uh, torque loss at the low end. Did you have to make a different plate? It looks like the plate that your door is attached to is different. No, it's the same. Mine? Same one. It looks different than what I've got on mine, I think. Yeah. I think they've enclosed the motor a little bit more on the version that I have. I think, how old's your lathe? Four years? Oh, uh, three years probably. And. And Two and a half. Just in case people are wondering, you did repaint your uh, backsplash. Right, from a, I repainted that. From Because I'm the same way. I thought that it was kind of odd for it to be green. So and the chip tray is green too normally, right? Yep, I yeah. repainted that. Uh, how did you get the stock color? Did you go to an auto body shop and have them? I went to Home Depot and bought the closest thing I could find, and it turned out to be an excellent match. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, and now you could probably have them mix it for you, although I don't know if they mix enamel colors or if they just mix, like, house paint, but... Excellent. Well, it definitely looks a lot better without the, the green chip tray and backsplash, but... Another change I made was uh, this little spider handle that goes on the end for, uh, for manual threading. And that'll work with the door closed as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that makes it nice. You can thread right up to the shoulder without being nervous. Can't close the door with my handle like this. Oh. Now, one of the nice things about your reverse design is that everything's enclosed inside. Some of the other designs that I've seen, and even uh, the designs that we've got on projectsofmetal.com have a kind of an external lever to switch between forward and reverse, but... I kind of like the way your design is nice and elegant and all enclosed inside. Well, the the other design probably has an ease of use feature, but I rarely use the reverse. Right. I mean, you would only use that when you're doing left-handed threads, so right. it's not something that's very common. Right. So what else do you have right here? ER40 collet, which goes on... Uh, goes on the lathe. So I find this to be much more usable than the uh, C5 collets. Well, and I, it, I don't think it sticks out as far either, which is no, good. No, it doesn't. No. Because I think compact. Little Machine Shop sells uh, an adapter plate that you can get, but it would stick out. Here, th hold that back up again. The nose of it sticks out quite a bit further. That doesn't stick out any further than the original three and four jaw chuck. Right. Actually, a little less. Yeah, and this threads right onto the uh, onto the spindle thread. Wasn't it like one inch and inch and uh, eight threads per inch? Inch or and three quarters by eight, I believe. Yeah, it is. kind of an it's odd an odd size. Yeah. So did you? You obviously had to single point thread the inside of that. Oh yeah, yeah sure. I I yeah. didn't imagine you bought a a tap specifically <laughs> for that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was single pointed. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see free project plans, tips, and tricks for the amateur machinist, please visit projectsandmetal.com. And if you're interested in additional videos, go ahead and visit the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash projectsandmetal. And please do not forget to subscribe. Thanks.